Good evening, everyone. Uh, I have a couple of slides. Let's let it come on, on, on the screen there. Yeah, so always the post-lunch sessions are hard. So I will try to make it as uh, uh, interesting and interactive as possible. Uh, so the first part I can try, the second part is only possible if you contribute to it. So I hope to get some questions and we'll discuss more. So what I'm going to tell you today, uh, of course, the, the session is about programmatic, and so I'll speak about programmatic. This has been new to me also because it's a new technology. Uh, but we started using it uh, in our few campaigns. So I'm basically going to tell you about my experience through two case studies on how we used it so that you get some perspective on where you can use and what can be uh, the use cases here. Uh, to start with, uh, so we started a rebranding or a repositioning for Upgrad three years ago. Uh, we repositioned it as a upskilling platform which is cool so that the new generation working professionals are excited about it. It's no longer a very academic focused uh, organization or brand, it's more about talking to everyone who we feel is a customer who can upskill and get a get better ROI from their career. So that's what we started with. So when you start, you reposition a brand and you start doing your marketing from zero, first step or first stage of brand building is the awareness. So Upgrad did not have much awareness three years ago. So the first thing which we did for the first one and a half year was building awareness. So the first few campaigns were all about what, I mean, telling everyone that hey, there's something like Upgrad and this is uh, the place where you should come if you're thinking about upskilling. Upskilling was always a very small market because we Indians don't believe in investing in ourselves. We believe that okay, we're out of college, we got a job. Okay, that thing is done. Now I'll focus on my job. But a lot of things have changed, um, especially post Y2K, when uh, with the change in technology, people did realize that even if you want to survive in your job, you need to keep investing and knowing about newer and newer technologies. So that's where that's what we took in awareness, saying that you know this is important for every one of you, and Upgrade is the place to do that. Uh, when you do awareness, um, largely it's a carpet bombing game. That is, you need to ensure that you reach as much of audience as possible with the highest frequency. So a lot of campaigns originated with TV as the center because we, we were just saying, let everyone see it. And we were trying to build virality in it. So this, uh, and this is where we went on IPL, uh, we went on Shark Tank, things like that. Right? And we clearly, we always had post and pre, pre and post campaigns, what is the brand strength like? So we saw it steadily go up. By uh, mid of 2022, we saw that the increment in awareness which was getting created with every new campaign was shrinking. Which kind of gave us an impression that, okay, now we have started moving into the next phase where people largely, the TG we are talking about, know about upgrade the brand, but they are not ready to buy it. So which is where the second stage comes in, which we call as the consideration stage. Now why is consideration stage important for Upgrad? Because Upgrad, although it's a brand for upskilling, it means different things for different cohorts of audience. For techies, it's about a platform which features them about newer technologies. For someone who is not in tech or someone who wants to go into managerial uh, uh, side of things, it's a platform where you can do online MBA. We have courses for HR professionals, we have courses for finance professionals, we have, I mean, you say it, we have a very large catalog of courses. So it was important for us that depending on the cohort we are talking to, they see Upgrad as something which is relevant to us. And that's where we move to consideration phase. Because if it's not, they will just see, okay, it's an upskilling platform, it's not for me. Because typically an upskilling platform in India is associated with tech. So that's where the second phase is. Now the problem with second phase or consideration phase is that you're telling different stories to different people. And that's where we consciously decided that TV may not be the right medium because you can't target people there. It's, I mean, it's a spray and pray largely. So hence our focus has been in digital. Now the issue with digital is that digital, I mean, not now, probably pre-COVID has been a very restricted um, uh, I mean, what should I say? Uh, inventory when compared to TV. TV can take you through the to billions of people, but digital still was restricted. So things have changed, and when COVID happened, what we saw was yes, the digital inventory exploded, 
but at the same time it became more and more complex to control your targeting at very at every corporate level and that's where we started thinking about uh, uh, our programmatic and i'll tell you more about that uh, of course we have not i don't think we have reached the, the phase three which is conversion i believe we will reach there when the value proposition is very clearly established and it's more about just reminding the customer at the right point that upgrade exists. So that, I, in my view, will take another two, two and a half years to get there. Um, now what is programmatic? I'm sure uh, after a full day of programmatic conference, you're all aware of what programmatic is. Uh, from a brand side or from a buyer side, it's fundamentally about purchasing uh, through bidding and targeted placements on web and app assets in an automated manner. Right? I mean, and this is, I would say this is an evolutionary journey. Initially, buying ad spaces, uh, I mean, if you have been in digital since the 2000s, you put a bid and the next day is when you will know whether the ad ran or not. A lot of things change with Google improving its technology. This is more, I would see, I see this more as an evolutionary way of doing things, uh, improvements where you can now get access to your inventory and change things very fast. So uh, I, I would say that this is also an outcome of very large digital inventory available today. In the US, the digital inventory available is bigger than the TV inventory today. In India also, we are closing that gap. So which means that you have a very, com very complex and large inventory and the best part about digital is this is indexed inventory. So for a digital marketer, you have a lot of parameters to play with which humanly, manually is not possible, which is where technology comes in. And that's what your programmatic is. It is great for the publishers because uh, they are able to get better CPM now, because it's no longer a homogeneous pricing. It is good for the brands, especially in running experiments. And this is where we felt in consideration phase, this is super important for us, because when you target, you really don't know if this target can build consideration or not. And when you're talking about consideration, your frequency has to be high. So it's a lot of money. If you're going to put in money and then look at it a week later, seeing whether it's working or not. With programmatic, these experiments, turnaround time becomes really quick. In one day itself, you can make a decision, okay, this is not working, I leave that event and move to the next one. Right, so I felt uh, when we started on this uh, tool or this technology was really useful at the stage we were in. And that's where we have been uh, using it in a big way. We are also seeing that programmatic inventory is getting, I mean, the digital inventory in India is getting converted into programmatic inventory really fast. Almost 40 percentage of the digital inventory available in India is now programmatic. Last year, and this I would say is a, was a monument event in the life of programmatic, Truecaller converted their entire inventory into programmatic. And this is very I mean, this is very relevant because uh, what Truecaller does is that Truecaller now allows you to target the people who are getting calls from your computator and when the computator calls, they'll put your ad there. Imagine, uh, upgrade ad is shown when somebody from Simply Learn is calling a customer. Right? And these things are possible, right? Uh, yeah, so these are just a bit of statistics. Uh, yeah, we have been seeing big growth in it. Uh, and we are expecting that this will only grow. From a 40% we are expecting by the start of the next year, we will see a 45 percentage. And at a global level also, it's growing at a high 26 percentage CAGR. I'm talking about the conversion into the programmatic way of doing things. Uh, let me come to how we used it and what, so that I can tell you a bit on our campaigns also. So what we did when uh, we moved into consideration phase is that we stopped promoting uh, in our brand campaigns, upgrade the brand. Instead, we started promoting the sub-brands of upgrade, which is basically upgrade data science, upgrade MBA, upgrade doctorate, so on and so forth. Right? Now, when we are promoting something like this, the problem is that I need to target the right audience which is relevant for it. And that's where these kind of technology really helped us. So the first one, which you can see, right? Why Kiran uh, is very, very important. This was a tech ad which we did. Now tech is uh, easier set than understood because it's not one program. It's around five, six program. There's full stack development, there's cloud, there's cyber security, there's big data, so on and so forth. And today, we can actually cohortize the audience to some extent who are interested in each of these programs. So what we did was, 
we shot this ad in five different versions. And we used each of this version to, cohort, to target a particular cohort. And we saw that some of the cases it's working, some of the cases not working. Then we realized what is the right place to put it. Right? So this is where your uh, media is moving today. It's been about more and more about granularity, more and more about uh, targeting, and more and more about the right product showed or right messaging showed to the right cohort of the customer. Uh, this is I'll talk about this campaign, but let me uh, take you through the case study first. So the first thing which we did, uh, or as a as the consideration uh, way of doing things was, we started doing ads at a business unit level, which is basically now I'm talking about the sub brands of a brand. Now, if I'm talking about sub brand, also as I explained, the cohort has to be very very relevant, and this is one place we started using programmatic. Why? Because you can target a cohort, but you'll never know what is the relevancy of that cohort for a particular ad. The cohort which is which may work for tech may work for MBA also. So what did we do with the programmatic? We tested out, we experimented, and we saw what is the response coming on that. Once you do that, then you know that this works there. So that's one place we used. Uh, the second was a very uh, interesting thing. So I told you about how we created multiple ads for the tech portfolio. When we uh, tried to do the same thing for our AI ML portfolio, we realized that from a consumer perspective, there are multiple types of consumer who comes and takes our product. There are people who are tech, I mean people who have a background in tech, there are people who don't have a background in tech, multiple different uh, transitions, someone who is in tech wants to move into tech, someone who is in non-tech wants to move into tech, so on and so forth. So we said that okay, if we can do 5 ads and do it successfully, why don't we do 120 ads now? So what we did is, uh, and somebody was talking in the uh, uh, panel on, on this, we used first party data from certain first party companies to understand the cohorts, understand our audience better. Then we created an ad, uh, ad using, I mean with two, uh, two uh, data scientists, very famous data scientists in the leading ones, uh, ranked uh, in the top 10. But that one ad, basically the data scientist is talking about how by taking this course, you can transition into a data scientist role. This is what they're talking about. Now the problem is, the person who is seeing this ad may be a tech person, may be a non-tech person, may be a person who has some exposure in coding, may be a person who has no exposure in coding, so on and so forth. So what we did was, one second, sorry. Yeah. So what we did, I'll come back to that. What we did was, we created 190 unique segments. And we created around 150 versions of the ad. Now how do you create 150 versions of the ad? That is where certain AI ML tools can help you. Uh, where we got the idea was a Cadbury ad of Shah Rukh Khan. So it's the same uh, uh, agency we use with. We use an agency to use the primary data, we use another agency to create the 150 versions of the ad and then we use programmatic buying to target those cohorts. So you can see that the reach was around 8 million. The frequency was nearly 2. We saw that when compared to YouTube, which is typically the campaign, uh, the platform you use, we had a 20% improvement in the CPC. The returns were also good. So I'll show you the ad now. Yeah. So now because I've told you it's AI, you will find fault in it. But for a person who sees for the first time, it won't be a, it was never a problem. Sorry. Are you a working professional looking to shift to data science and multiply your annual CTC by 5x over the next three years? Upgrad has transitioned over 7,000 professionals like you. Take the example of Kailash Narani, no coding experience, but got a job with a CTC hike of over 100% after doing data science from Upgrad. So, do you want to be the next Kailash Narani or the first you? So this person he's talking about is our actual alumni. We took the profile of that guy and we created lookalike, around 190 lookalike, uh, clusters of lookalike. And for each of them, we had a separate ad. Now what, you, what I'm trying to say is, with so much of data available today, 
and you have options to really do micro targeting. You have option to change things after uh, through experimentation. That's where all these technologies will help you. Right? So these are the few things which we did. I'll just add one more uh, speak a bit about our last current campaign, the current campaign we are doing. So you can see the three photographs here, right? So this is I mean we have not started programmatic on this. But what we are doing this time is that uh, I mean, advantage Upgrade has when compared to anyone else in the market is a large number of alumni who have successfully done transition after studying from us. And these are true stories. Right? So we said that if we have 70,000 people who are willing to say that I am successful today because of Upgrad, why don't we start talking about that story? Now the issue is that testimonial is the least believed ad type in this world. Okay, because <laughs> people have been just using testimonial to lie and lie and lie. So it's a complicated problem. So what we did is we said, uh, we told a few of our alumni that we want to make an ad, but we want you to be natural. So we don't, we are not going to give you any script or anything. You come to our studio, let's have a conversation. So three or four of them agreed. So they came to our studio and then our team started just talking to them. Each of these videos you see are two hour long and you can see the full version on YouTube. From that two hours, we edited out 30 seconds and 40 seconds out of it. And then we started using this on digital. The response has been quite good because these videos, I am getting almost 75% completion of the video view. Typically people skip after 5 seconds. This I am seeing such great engagement. So this is another one which I am going to do on programmatic because again this is perfect. Because each of these person is a different profile. If I'm able to create a micro uh, cohort and start using programmatic to test out which ad works, now I have a solution there also. Right? So yeah, so these are the two case study and third one I just told you, work in progress, where we have used uh, programmatic. Yeah, so that's all I have. Thank you so much. Thanks. Hopefully it was a good session. Thank you.